What's up everybody, welcome back to Vermont Scale Customs. Thank you for stopping by the channel. So let me first start by saying that, uh, I guess it must have been almost about a year ago when I really kind of started looking at these things um, pretty seriously, scratching my head and wondering if it was at all anything that I should get into. And I probably waited till sometime around like the end of November, I guess, um, and decided to go for it. My birthday is like the first week of December, and so I decided because they have like you know the a firm six payment plan or whatever, you can nice airplane flying over right as I'm going to over. Anyway, since they have uh, the six payment plan, I, I figured it broke it down into like $103 a month, so I went for the RTR uh, because I, you know, knowing nothing about MOAs and how to program uh, stuff yet. Well, actually, since I just programmed my other MOA, because that, of course, was inspired by having this. Anyway, um, I'm just learning this whole thing. I just now, you know, basically just got into this. And uh, these are the first runs. Pretty psyched about this thing. I'm pretty psyched what it can do, um, including this coming up. This was a complete surprise. It totally caught me off guard. The only thing I can say is that I'm really happy that I had the camera running and pointed in the right direction, that it caught all of it because this was something that, I, as far as I'm kind of concerned, kind of defied the laws of physics, at least for me. Um, but it's real world stuff, you know, it's things that when you mess around with these comp rigs on sharp, jagged rocks like this, it's gonna do the funkiest stuff that you've never even imagined was possible. It's gonna show you all kinds of random, random things about physics that you just didn't even know were a reality. So this is kind of cool. And that's something that um, I guess maybe it's kind of indicative of what kind of style I may end up kind of having uh, for driving and stuff because I snowboarded for over 30 years of my life and used to build terrain parks and stuff and ran snow cats and everything. So jumps and clearing gaps for some reason uh, is just inherently in my blood. And so um, while I kind of think I have a little bit sort of a mellow approach to some crawling things, there are some kind of go for it um, aspects to the way I drive and it's coming through with this thing. So, uh, um, all right, so this is attempt number one at this interesting line that I found. This is probably about 16 inches tall at its peak. And of course this thing just walks right up with no problem. Not even trying to use dig or anything like that. It just goes. And once you get around up to the top up here, there's a larger boulder that you see to the left. And that's basically my target of this line. And I really had no idea what my plan was yet. And I'm really just feeling it out. And so I end up fast forwarding through what is the first mistake coming up here pretty quickly. Obviously I'm just way too far in. So here's attempt number two. Now I know a lot of people really like to obviously modify these with the electronics and, and motors and everything of their choice and stuff. Um, I did not get that deep into this thing, thing yet. I really just bought an RTR because I, I wanted to run one and get used to it from, from that angle and then kind of pull it apart and, and sort of take it as it comes. I figured out that by adjusting the dual rate of not only the steering, uh, but the throttle itself, um, it gets you a lot more control. I know a lot of people don't like the electronics in this thing. They kind of talk trash about it pretty consistently. Great fall off this. That's probably about six feet down, by the way, into this nice hole. And I'm very glad that I put a metal roof on it because it definitely helped save that whole, that whole thing right there. But back to the electronics, um, I dialed the dual rate throttle down to, I think it's like 70 or 71%. And then I put a 70 kilogram brushless servo in the thing. And I believe I have steering 
pushed up to about, this is dual rate, I think I had dual rate pushed to about 103, 104%. Uh, front and rear axles are clocked. Um, I have also swapped out some of the rod ends for the angled rod ends, mainly the top links. Um, and then I also took out the long uh, rod ends on the rear because I wanted to shorten this to WRCCA standards for uh, Worlds in September and Maine. And so I wanted to drive it that way all summer long. And so based upon my whole experience yesterday, obviously there are you know things that could probably be done to this but my first experience with this i'm i'm gonna drive it like this and i'm gonna learn it like this and i'm going to do my best to um try and build my experience you know totally around you know how this is right now and as the summer goes along if things fail and stuff like that then i will seek to either replace them or if it feels like this thing is going to fall apart and it's not going to hold up then perhaps I'll, you know, look at building another rig. But right now I'm perfectly content and perfectly happy with how this thing runs. Um, my apologies in advance for getting so off center with this. Um, this is a really nice segment actually, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Nice little gap coming up again. Good little hole with this thing. I'm trying to avoid staying on it. This is all about chest high to me and so there's like about a four or five foot drop like right into this little hole that you see kind of down at the bottom of the camera so this next move is just another one of those quick little try and shoot the gap and now the front definitely outweighs the back end of this thing now that it's over you know it'll pull itself over and you can see the rear wheel kind of floats a little bit through this whole spot not much but enough and I make it to the other side and I really wanted to go further up this, but there was no route. I just wanted to see basically how, how much it would go. So attempt number four at this, but I do something different at the top. And this isn't really true hang gang. It's not like 90 degrees off a cliff, but I decided to take the other side up and it's ledged out pretty steep off that side <laughs> definitely holding on by the inside of the, the left tires so as I get to the top um, I start to kind of go left but I decided that I, I didn't want to make that run again because I knew I wasn't gonna make it and I felt like that there was a way that I could get down and around through this back to where I just was and try and recreate that crawl so I head down that way and I get stuck under a ledge and I'm trying to get out from under it. And just to let you see and let me look at what's going on afterwards, I do this and I gun it because I thought it was gonna, yeah, I thought it was gonna work out somehow. And speaking of trying to bridge the gap on stuff, like I said a few minutes ago, this seems to be kind of indicative of my driving style very early on. And I'm not sure if it's something I wanna kind of focus on or like kind of stay away from doing, but at any rate, that rock to the lower left, well, middle left on the side, that's my target. I'm trying to get there and set up, but the left wheel is about to get hung, which is already done. It's kind of grooved out in there and it won't let go. And that's what I was trying to do. I'm just trying to gap to the other side and then it just rolled on through. So needless to say, I really like this thing a lot. You're going to see much, much more of it. Um, I'm very happy with how the RTR is, and I'm sure that I would be absolutely crucified, you know, by a lot of the veterans in this hobby for saying something like that. But that's what I got. Yep.